Hey there, it's Kenzie from Details to Enjoy, and today I'm going to be DIYing the kits from our May and June vignette subscription box. This box comes with two kits that are meant to coordinate together, so I'm going to be working on them at the same time. One thing to keep in mind if you also get this kit is to make sure you don't lose the small brads that are included in the botanical sprig kit. Once I have everything unpackaged, I can get started on painting my pieces. I'm going to be working on the larger insert first, and I'm going to do a color wash technique on this. So first I need to rehydrate the sponge that's in the kit to get it nice and soft. This method works with any color, but I'm going to be using my favorite white, which is Silky White by Bear. The goal of the color wash method is to show the texture of the MDF through the paint. So in order to achieve this, I need to thin out my paint with a little bit of water. I use my sponge to drop a few drops of water into the paint and I'm swirling that around to mix it in. Once I have the paint the consistency I'm looking for, I can start to apply it to my insert using the sponge. This method isn't an exact science and it can turn out differently each time, so you may want to practice on the back of your insert to get a feel for what you're looking for. Once I have my entire insert covered in the paint, I'm going to use the clean side of my sponge to wipe away any excess paint that may be sitting on top. Keep in mind that this technique does look a little bit different once it's dried and all of the moisture is gone from the MDF. While I wait for that insert to dry, I can start to work on the botanical sprig and the vertical shiplap insert. For my sprig, I'm going to be using Bermuda Grass by Bear and squeezing a tiny bit onto my tray. And then for my insert, I'm going to be using Mount Etna by Sherwin-Williams and I'm just going to work straight out of the jar on this one. Whenever I'm painting pieces, I generally keep the edges of my pieces black because I like the nice crisp look, which means I just want the paint to sit on the top of the piece. To do this, I use a fairly dry brush, tapping off most of the excess, and then carefully and lightly go over the piece, making sure to wipe up any paint that has gotten over the edges. While that dries, I can start working on painting this insert. And again, I'm working in very thin coats. It's always best to work in thin coats. It dries faster and it looks smoother. And if I do get any areas where paint has pulled up, I make sure to go over it with my brush to smooth it out. Because the shiplap lines are engraved, there is a little bit of paint pulled up. So I need to remove that using the tack that was included in the kit. I am just gliding the tack through the engraved line and then making sure to clean the excess paint off the tack before I move on to the next line. And while that dries, I can go back to working on my botanical piece, adding a second coat. After a few minutes, my insert is dry again and I can go in with a clean sanding block to smooth everything out. After I sand, I need to make sure I clean up any excess dust with a clean dry cloth. Now I can go in with a second coat and I'm not going to be sanding after this coat because I want the insert to maintain this really dark rich color and sanding it will affect the color. Sanding is always optional. We just find that it makes our pieces feel a little bit nicer and more professional. And now I'm just making sure to clean up any of that excess paint with the tack. You'll want to do this after every coat that you do. To sand this brig, I'm making sure I grab a clean sanding block. I don't want to mix any of the blue paint dust onto my green piece by using the same sanding block as before. I also want to add a little bit of a distressed look, so I'm making sure to concentrate my sanding on the edges. And again, I'm just cleaning up all the extra dust with a clean, dry cloth. Once everything is painted and dry, I can move on to assembling my kits. All of our pieces have a peel and stick adhesive backing on the back, and you just need to peel off the protective layer. So I'm doing that, and then I'm going to place my sprig in about the center of the insert. Since this is a pretty organic shape, you don't need to worry too much about measuring and making sure it's exactly centered. So I just eyeballed it and then once I was happy with it, I pressed it into place. Next, I'm gonna work on the leather strap detail and first I need to pierce it. And to do this, I'm gonna use the same tack from earlier, making sure all of the paint is cleaned off. Once I have pierced the first side, I'm going to fold the leather piece in half and pierce it in the same spot on the other side. 
Then I'm going to remove the tack and switch it to the other side just to make sure that the hole is fully punched through. Next, I can insert the brad into the hole. I may need to wiggle it a little bit to get it through. And then once I have it through, I need to separate the tongs on the back of the leather piece and fold them down flat to hold everything in place. Then I just repeat those steps for the brad on the other side of the leather strap. Next, I need to secure the strap to my insert. So for this, I'm going to use a couple of dabs of hot glue and then press it into place. Now this insert is done, but as I was setting it aside, I remembered that this is a great way to measure out my rope. I need 10 inch lengths and the height of the insert is 10 inches. So I measured that out and then just folded the rope to measure each of the 13 pieces that I need. Once I have all of that measured out, I can cut the loops to create 13 individual pieces. Now I need to tie the knots around my chevron piece. So to do this, I'm going to grab a piece of rope and fold it in half, making sure that my edges are lined up. And then once I have that folded in half, I'm going to place it over the top of the chevron piece and then reach my fingers through, pull the tails through the loop and then tighten that down. Once I have it tightened down on my chevron piece, I can move that into place on the far side of my insert and continue on the rest of the knots. So I'm just gonna grab another piece of rope, again, fold it in half, making sure the tails are matched up, lay that across the front face of the insert, reach my fingers in from the front to pull the loops from the back to the front through the loop, and then tighten it and push it into place. Now I just need to do that 11 more times. And when I get to the end, I should have six knots on each side of the chevron with one right in the center. You could choose to leave your ropes like this, but I'm going to be unraveling mine to make it more of a dense fringe. So I'm just unwrapping each of the strands by twisting them apart and combing through them with my fingers. This part is a little bit repetitive and can be a little bit time consuming, but it's really easy and you can just sit back and watch a TV show as you work on unraveling all of your rope. Once everything was unraveled and fluffed, I was ready to cut my chevron shape. So I'm using a little bit of washi tape to create a guide for myself. I just eyeballed this using the chevron from above as a guide for where to create this chevron. This step is a little bit easier if you have nice scissors, but it was actually really easy to cut along my guide with that tape there. So I just did that on each side, making sure to straighten everything out before I made the next cut. If you are following along with me, I would recommend doing something a little bit differently. So right here, I peeled off my tape and I trimmed up my edges and then I stuck it in my frame to test that everything was the right length. And this is when I realized that I hadn't cut my rope short enough. So I would recommend testing it before you do your cut and moving your tape line if necessary because it really is easier with the tape on. But I just did this last trim without any tape and it worked out okay. When putting these inserts into your frame, I recommend putting the chevron fringe piece into the frame first, and then when you put in the shiplap insert, this will push down any of the strings going the wrong way, and you can just straighten everything up. And there are both of my inserts completely done. I hope you enjoyed following along if you did, and if you created your own version of this project, we would love to see it, so be sure to tag us in social media. It's details to enjoy on Instagram and Facebook.